maximum questions do not have a defined process to them. There are some essential concepts. We'll discuss those and then we'll see how to use them logically. After all, GMAT is a test of reason, isn't it? So let's jump in. So in our sequences video, we saw that arithmetic mean is greater than or equal to geometric mean for positive numbers. Right, so uh, arithmetic mean takes its lowest value when it is equal to geometric mean and that's when the geometric mean takes its highest value. Now, based on this, we said that if some positive numbers have a constant sum, then their product is maximum when numbers are equal. Also, that when some numbers have a product that is constant, product is constant, then sum is minimum when the numbers are equal, right? So, we saw these two. So, for example, in case we have two numbers and we know A, B or let's say three numbers C, and let's say that their uh, product is, for example, 20, then uh, this is a constant product, right? So when will the sum of the numbers A plus B plus C be minimum? What is the minimum value of the sum of these numbers? That will happen when A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to the third root of 20. Right, the numbers need to be positive, they do not need to be integers. Certainly, they can be anything, but they need to be positive. All three of them do need to be positive, right? Okay, so then uh, the sum will be minimum when all three are equal to third root of 20, which means that a plus b plus c minimum sum is this is three times the third root of 20, right? Okay, so now. Let's take an example based on this concept. Given that A, B, and C are positive, okay. So first thing we know that they are positive, so we can use this concept. We can use arithmetic mean and this constant sum and uh, stuff concept, right? Uh, the moment we see A, B, and C are positive or the numbers are positive, the first thing that I think of is AM greater than or equal to GM. The first thing I think of is this particular concept. Because more often than not, this is what it is testing in that case. Okay, and A square BC is equal to 324. What is the minimum value of A plus B plus C? Okay, so now there's a little bit of a mismatch over here. Right? We need the sum of A plus B plus C, the minimum value of this, but the product is given of A square BC, the constant product is A square BC, not ABC. So then can we do something? I mean, the, if we can't say that the three numbers are A, B, and C, isn't it? Because the product A square B, C is given to be constant. Here we have two A's. Okay, so what if, now we'll make a little bit of an adjustment. What if the numbers were A by 2, A by 2, because we need two A's, but we need the sum to be A plus B plus C. So we split this A into A by 2, so that the sum stays A, plus, A by 2 plus A by 2, that is A. But the product becomes A square, right? So then what if we had these four numbers? Now, their product is what? Their product is A square BC upon 4, which is equal to 324 upon 4, which is equal to 81. So the product is still constant, right? We still get that the product is a constant. The four numbers are these. Their product is a constant which is equal to 81. We need the minimum value of their sum a by 2 plus a by 2 plus b plus c. We know the product of all the four numbers is 81 and all the numbers are equal which means each number is equal to 3. That is A by 2 is equal to A by 2 is equal to B is equal to C is equal to 3. Each number is equal to 3. All four of them multiply to give 81. 
and their sum will be minimum when each one of them is equal to 3 and what will be that minimum sum when a by 2 is 3 of course a by 2 is 3 when b is 3 and when c is also 3 so the minimum sum will be 12 when we add all of them up of course we are adding a by 2 plus a by 2 plus b plus c but this adds up to a plus b plus c so that is why the minimum value of a plus b plus c is equal to 12. Okay, great. Let's look at the next example. Given that x and y are positive, so moment I say x and y are positive, okay, then am greater than or equal to gm is something I can use. And x square plus y square is greater than or equal to 256. What is the minimum value of x square plus y square? So the sum for which we are looking for the minimum value is x square plus y square. Let's assume that the two numbers are x square and y square that we are talking about and Let's use this concept of am greater than or equal to gm. So we say x square plus y square upon 2, that is the am, is greater than or equal to square root of x square y square. So we get x square plus y square by 2 is greater than or equal to xy, not uh, the absolute value of xy because xy are anyway positive. We know that the numbers are positive, so we don't need to take the absolute value. It is anyway going to be equal to xy. This gives us x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to 2xy. So we know that this will always be greater than or equal to this based on am greater than or equal to gm. All right, we are given x plus y whole square is equal to, uh, uh, is greater than or equal to 256. Let's open this up. We get x square plus y square plus 2xy greater than or equal to 256. So now this part is always greater than or equal to 2xy. So the minimum value of this will happen when it is equal to this. Because this will always be either equal to this or greater than this. So whatever may the total sum of these two be, this will be this will take the minimum value when it is equal to this. So since the minimum sum of these two is 256, we can say that this will take its minimum value when it is 128 and this is also 128. Does that make sense to you? So, for example, if instead of 256, it says greater than or equal to. If instead of 256, this was 300, then the, the minimum value of this would become 150 and the minimum value of a uh, maximum value of this would become 150. They would be equal. Then this would take the minimum value of 150. But since the minimum value of this entire sum, this entire sum is 256, we can split it into 128, 128, and that will be the minimum value of x square plus y square. In every other case, when the total sum is greater than 256, then x square plus y square will have a greater minimum value. So the minimum minimum value that x square plus y square can take is 120. Uh, am greater than or equal to gm is one of the most frequently tested concept on maximum questions. Keep it in mind. While discussing quadratics, we talked about the maximum and the minimum value of quadratics. We said that they look like a parabola on the xy axis, something like this. These are the two roots, this and this. We know that the sum of the roots is minus b by a and the product is c by a, fine. So then the sum of this and this is minus b by a, that is the x-coordinates, right? And the minimum will obviously be right in the center because it's symmetric. So the minimum will be when x is equal to minus b by 2a, that is the average of the two, right? Right in the center of this, since this plus this is equal to minus b by a, the, the center point will be minus b by 2a. So we said that the quadratic will take its minimum value or its maximum value if it is a downward opening parabola when x is equal to minus b by 2a, right? 
x is equal to minus b by 2a gives us the minimum or the maximum. And when we plug this back into the quadratic, this value of x back into the quadratic, we get the maximum or the minimum value of the quadratic, right? So then let's see how we use it in questions. Given that y is equal to this entire expression, what is the minimum value that y can take? So minimum value of y we need to find. Now this entire expression, I don't know what to do with it except that there is a cubic equation and there is an x plus 2 at the bottom. So maybe x plus 2 is a factor over here because otherwise I don't know how to handle cubic uh, equations uh, expressions. So then... Okay, let me assume that it might be, let's try, if I put x equal to minus 2 over here, I get minus 8, then minus 13 by 2 into 4, which gives us minus 8 minus 26, then plus, no, minus 2, because um, plus x, x is minus 2, and plus 36. So then, it adds up to give us zero. So then that means x plus 2 is a factor of this cubic equation, of this cubic. It's not an equation of this cubic expression, right? All right. Um, then it has to multiply with the quadratic to give us x cubed minus 13 by 2x squared plus x plus 36. Okay, so the first term is relatively simple. We need an x cube here, so x will multiply with x square. The constant is simple as well because we need a 36, we have a 2 here. So we must need an 18 because 2 will multiply with 18. Only constant will multiply with the constant to give us 36. Now this, the middle term, we need to find a middle term. Okay, Let's take this, let's work with x. It's a little simpler than x square, so let's work with x. We need to get x, that is... 18 will multiply with this x to give us 18x here. Now this 2 should multiply with this x term so that overall 18x minus 17x. So this should give me a minus 17x so that we have an x here. Because we'll obtain an 18x from here and we should get a minus 17x from here to get an x on the right hand side. So then, what should we do over here? But how will we get a minus 17x over here? 2 will multiply with what to give a minus 17x? 2 will multiply with minus 17 by 2x. Only then will I get a minus 17x. So then the quadratic, so then y becomes equal to x plus 2 x square minus 17 by 2x plus 18 upon x plus 2. And of course, the 2x plus 2s get cancelled. And we are left with x square minus 17 by 2x plus 18. So, um, yeah, just keep in mind that here we need to be given that x is not equal to 2. This should be given to us in the question. Okay, because we have x plus 2 in the denominator, so the question should mention specifically that x is not equal to 2. So then the quadratic, y becomes equal to this particular quadratic. Now this will take its minimum value because we need the minimum value of y. This, Of course, we know that y will take a minimum value. Why? Because the coefficient of x square is positive which means that it is an upward opening parabola. That is, it looks like this. And if it looks like this, then it will take a minimum value. So then the minimum value will be when x is equal to minus b by 2a and minus b is 17 by 2 upon 2a is 2. So when x is equal to 17 by 4, then we'll get the minimum value of y. But we need the actual value of y. So we'll plug x is equal to 17 by 4 over here. So 17 by 4 square minus 17 by 2 into 17 by 4 plus 18. Okay, now um, it's, it's simple enough the, here. Look, this is 17 squared by 16 and this is minus 17 squared by 8. So what will we get? Minus 17 squared by 16 here. 
plus 18. Now, if you're not sure how we obtain this, think about it. If we have, for example, half minus 1, what is this equal to? It is equal to minus half. So this is, okay, if we have, let's say, half x minus x, that is equal to minus half x. Right? So consider this entire thing to be half. This is 17 squared by 16 minus 17 squared by 8. So in a way, if I say my x is equal to 17 squared by 8, what do I get here? I get x upon 2 minus x, if my x is 17 squared by 8, right? So that is why what I should get is minus x by 2, which is minus 17 squared by 16. Okay. Now, uh, of course, this we know is mine, uh, 289, 17 squared. And this is a little bit of a complicated uh, calculation, but you know, we'll just have to do it. That's fine. So 16 into 18 is 288 and you divide by 16. So you get a minus 1 by 16. So the minimum value of y, the minimum value of y is minus 1 by 16. Actually, x should not be equal to minus 2. Uh, because x plus 2 should not be equal to 0. There shouldn't be a 0 in the denominator, right? So that is why, because that is not defined. So x should not be equal to minus 2. So the quadratic ax square plus bx plus c is upward opening in case a is positive, And that is why it has a minimum value. And in case a is negative, then it is downward opening. And then that is why it has a maximum value. This value can be found at x is equal to minus b by 2a.